This is Nairobi National Park in Kenya, a wilderness area teeming with game right on the edge of the city of Nairobi. Pictures of the animals with the city skyline or the industrial area in the background are a standard in magazines and websites all over the world. But the city only borders one side of the park. The rest of the area is surrounded by rural communities, cattle, sheep and goat herders. This park, along with most other parks in Kenya, is unfenced along the rural boundaries. Predators living around the edges of these parks will often turn to livestock raiding as it's an easier option with the livestock being slower and often confined in one space. The communities protect their animals by housing them in bomas during the night. These bomas can be simple structures made of thorns like the one we're visiting here or sometimes proper poles and fencing materials but they are by no means predator proof. Lions, leopards and hyenas can easily slip through gaps or even jump over the top of the fence to get into these bomas at night time, causing havoc like is being shown on screen now. To try to prevent further raids on their livestock, the villagers will often retaliate, trying to spear the predators like this one. Luckily this one survived and was able to get veterinary help, but the following lions were not so lucky. These were all speared and killed on the edges of reserves after stock raiding. There is a simple solution to this human wildlife conflict, plastic LED light bulbs and a solar panel. So lion man David Maskell, the man behind Light for Life, will explain how it all works. So what you do is you start off with um, these 12 volt LED bulbs, they're four diode, and take off the metal work which exposes the, the two contact wires. I then solder the, the loom wire Onto the, onto the two contacts. This is actually audio, high quality audio uh, wiring. And then I use a product which is, uh, you might even know of it, Blue Tac. Yeah. yeah. Um, I find that it, it works very well. It molds down the, the, the contacts, it keeps waterproof, and it lasts indefinitely. These bulbs have a 20 year warranty. I've only twice had bulbs go down on me, and but I, because it's, it's, it's properly assembled. I so say it takes about 20 minutes to do each bowl. <laughs> so that's part of it. The other part of the system is what I refer to as the power box, this unit here, which comprises of a charge control and a 12 volt, 7.2 or 7 amp, depending, uh, battery with a 12 volt battery. Okay. The, these I buy. Um, they're actually made in the EU by an, an Austrian company, Stecker. They're very, very, very good. But there's a facility with them to program it so that what effectively happens during the course of the day is the power is charging the battery. Yeah. It runs through this circuitry. If at night time, when the, when the power drops below 6.3 volts, it then transfers the power direct into the system automatically. Um, that drop in power usually occurs about quarter past, half past six in the evening, okay. thereabouts. So it runs all night. In the morning, as the power increases on the panel through the panel from 6.3 Back up, to the battery. Then it turns it automatically off. It charges all day. And it'll put the battery up. It's, it's got a circuitry in it as a charge control. So it'll charge the battery up to 13.4 maximum. Um, so it doesn't cook the battery, it doesn't overcharge the battery but it won't allow the battery to drop below 12.4 volts, which is below its its, its best efficient yeah. running. We've got a panel on here that shows the activities. If this battery is below charge, it shows orange here. Mm -hmm. If there's a fault in the system, you get a red flashing light. So you've got the two green lights, says the battery is fully charged, which I noticed because I put it on charge yesterday. All systems going. And the secret to the whole thing is this funny little box. Have you ever seen one of those before? <laughs> Looks like the um, for an indicator on the car, yes. the exactly relay it switch. Is. Yeah, exactly what it is. Yeah. It's a motorcycle indicator unit, 12 volt, so that um, when uh, when the power is transferred through it, it is what gives it the the flashes. The blinking. Nice. So the initial idea for the lighting system came from a young man in the local community. David will tell us more. Richard Terreri's light light system. Provision of him that this Marseille kid pondered the possibilities. I wonder why it is that with the appearance of all the Marseille, it 
happens is when the, if the cattle start lowing and moving around and getting restless, uh, know there's hyenas or lion or leopard around, then the community, the young guys get up with their spears and they run around with their torches, etc, etc. What is it that actually chases the lions off? Is it the presence of people? Um, what precisely? It occurred to him that maybe there was a kind of collation between this activity and the flashing lights. It was actually the flashing lights. There were people moving around doing all this business. So he had the imagination to uh, to try to put together a system, but because he's not even remotely mechanically or electronically gifted, he got a, a school friend of his to show him a fellow called Samuel. And Samuel said, well, it's not complicated. You get a power battery, you get 12 volt bulbs, and in between you put a thing like this because that's what all these motorcycles do. I was introduced to the concept, and I thought this is quite clever, maybe it works. I worked with a fellow called Michael Mbithi who introduced me to it initially, and eventually we had a party of the ways, and he does his thing. I do my thing, I plot on with what I do, it works, stops the retaliation and killing of lions, and that's, that's so all that matters in the end. Object. So the Light for Life system is basically an upgraded, more reliable version of that original idea. Light for Life is entirely funded by public donations, donations which so far have enabled over 150 installations around the edges of parks all over Kenya. That's 150 sets of livestock that are now safe. 150 families that no longer need to retaliate against the predators. Throughout the video there's been a link at the bottom of the screen, that link is also in the description. That is the GoFundMe link where you can make a donation to help the installation of these light saving systems. The cost of each of these installation works out to be $350 including all the equipment and travelling costs. A small price to pay to save the lives of predators and the livestock. So even the smallest donation will help prevent scenes like the ones we're seeing on screen. Help save predators like this lioness who was shot after stock raiding. Even a small donation can go towards helping prevent incidents like this one that happened to the very famous Marsh Pride of the BBC Big Cat Diary series. Three members of the Pride died after a poisoning incident where lionesses Sienna, Bibi and young male Alan all died as a result of feeding on a contaminated carcass that had been poisoned by the local community. This is what is saving our predators and lions. Light for life. Flashing light system. It will deter any predator from going into any boma and thereby preventing retaliatory killings.